This video is sponsored by Deep Cut Studios. For a wide range of fantastic gaming resources such as battle mats, dice trays and pre-painted bases, check out the description below. Hi guys, welcome back to CNG Productions. My name is Tom. We're back with another contrast painting tutorial. This time we're looking at the Sylvaneth warband from Night Vault, which is called Yathari's Guardians. But this painting tutorial should be useful for anyone looking to paint Tree Revenants or Sylvaneth in general. So as you can see, we've primed the miniature using Wraithbone. This tutorial is specifically only going to focus on contrast paints and dry brushing. We're using an Army Painter Regiment brush, and we're starting with the Athematic Blue. Now, a lot of tutorials I've seen online have just watered this down or sorry, thinned this down using the contrast medium, and you definitely can, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to apply it straight from the pot to the miniature, and hopefully with the dry brushing, you'll be able to see you can get a very similar effect. But if you've got more time or you want a slightly more subtle approach, you could use the medium. And we're basically going on all the flesh, all the weapons and any of the kind of crystal items that pop up. If you go over anywhere or overlap, don't worry too much, you can easily use the wraith bone from the pot. Next we're on to Wildwood, which is going to cover all of our bark areas. Now I'm going to start with just the areas that I want to be wooden. And the reasoning for that is because we're going to do a little bit of something fancy with a green to blend the areas that we want to look a little bit more like they've got flowers or um, you know, kind of like vines sprouting from them. Now, as I said, this tutorial is specifically designed just to make it kind of really quick and accessible. So you can see the wild wood goes on there, really dark colour, and I'm just moving it around with the brush to make sure it doesn't pull. Now, areas that I want to have a little bit of blending, essentially I'm going to put the wild wood on like I am on the arm here, and then I'm going to be using Plague Bearer Flesh. Now, you could use any of the greens, the Creed Camo, Militarum Green, they're slightly darker, but you'll see later on in the video why I use Plague Bearer Flesh, because it's this lighter kind of fresh sprouting vines colour, for want of a better word. So I'm applying that, washing my brush, then putting the Plague Bearer Fresh on. And while they're both wet, I'm just moving the colours into each other. So moving the brown into the Plague Bearer Green to darken it. And moving the Plague Bearer up into the brown to lighten that, to try and get a transition. And essentially, these contrast paints are really good. You can manoeuvre them throughout while they're drying. And as you can see, I've done the top of the branches, the feet. You can go overboard with this, or you can go as subtle as you want. And there's some examples using the rest of the warband here. So you can see I've done the legs and bits of this bark tabard and have specially gone to town on the higher branches. And you can see there's a brighter green on there because in a second we're going to dry brush that to kind of add less of a extreme transition. But essentially you just want a bit of a blend going between the colours, just working them between. If you want the wildwood to be a little bit lighter, you could put more Plague Bearer Flesh going upwards. If you want to darken obviously the flesh, you can pull the wildwood downwards and just play around with it until you get to a consistency and a transition that you're happy with. Now, any of the random adornments that are dotted around, we're going to use snake bite leather on. That's just a really nice, useful brownie colour, which still kind of keeps to the barkiness of the miniature, for want of a better word. Um, so, like the tabard on this model here. We're going to use uh, Magos Purple, which is a weird contrast paint that is actually pretty much pink. And the pink paint is pretty much purple, but we're going to go with it. So any of these little spiritual creatures that are dotting around, some of the other guardians have got ones that help them with uh, arrow holding. There's a really weird little miniature on one of the archers. Um, and they've got little kind of fey spirits around them. So this gives a nice contrast, pardon the pun, uh, for the colour palette. You know, you've got the dark of the wildwood and the brightness of the kind of athematic green. So this is for the little flowers that are dotted around and the little beastie that's just over your shoulder. And aside from the base... That's pretty much heading towards your tabletop miniature. So we've got the uh, Basilicanum Grey here for the base. We're going to use a bit of Creed Camo uh, for the leaves. And essentially that's a tabletop ready miniature straight away using only a few colours. And actually it's one you could be relatively happy with. Now we're going to take this a little bit further just to kind of add a little bit of dry brushing in. But you can see here really, really happy with the transitions that we've got there. And, you know, if you wanted to bang out an army really quickly and with relatively straightforward painting you know, focus, it's relatively quick and easy to go through, um, and I'm quite happy with that. However, as I said, that athematic blue is a little bit strong for me, so we're going to take some Ulthan Grey, and we are going to dry brush over. We're going to try and get most of the paint off our brush, so we're not going too heavy, because it's always better to start off light and then build layers. And essentially, we're going to pick up the high points of the miniature, such as the musculature, the hair, the axe handle, 
Um, you can see on the axe here, I've actually gone over it a second time because I had to tidy up a little bit of my painting using the wraith bone. But you see the Orphan Grey immediately adds some lightness to it and it makes it look far more ethereal. We can also go over the Magos Purple with this just to give a little bit of highlight on the beasties, give them a little bit of a pop and the crystal at the top of the miniature. Even on the tabard if you want to, just to add a little bit of that kind of whiter tone to it to brighten it up. And you can see immediately it makes it look more spirity and ethereal, it adds that paleness. Now for the wood, you've got a variety of choices that you could use. I'm going to use Gorthor Brown just to give a slight highlight. If you want to go really extreme and cartoony, you could use Bane Blade Brown. Now this uh, Gorthor Brown can go over pretty much everything that you've got with the wood. So not just the wild wood, but it could even go a little bit over the Plague Bearer flesh to kind of add even more transitions. Now put specific focus on the higher areas of the miniature and I'm also making sure that anywhere where that transition is a little bit too binary that I've not blended it quite as well, the Gorthor Brown's covering my sins and you can see just brings out that really dark wildwood and adds a little bit of a pop to it. Now, onto the green. Now, you can pick any green you want. There's like a uh, Lothan for Forest, I think it's called. Um, there's plenty of greens you could use. I'm going to use Moot Green, and it's quite a bright one. That's because, I again, want these shoots to look fresh and these vines and these different aspects. These warriors can probably use this bark to kind of protect themselves. It probably gets damaged a lot, so it's a good chance it's the bit that's growing the most. So I'm focusing heavily on the leaves because I want them to be as green as I can. It's almost a, cut, a, a mix between a dry brush and an overbrush in terms of how much paint I'm keeping on. Always less is more with this. So I'm focusing particularly on the extremities and I'm moving inwards towards the wood and also any areas that I want to look slightly decayed or maybe moist where the moss has grown on it. But I'm just trying to pick out key areas and again I'm focusing on where the transitions are between the green and the brown to again mask anything that's a little bit too binary. Now actually for this tutorial I didn't actually wash my dry brush once. I just continue to build up the colour. So actually this Bane Bay Brown and Lysian Green that's going on has got a little bit of that Moot Green, probably still a little bit on the brush. But either way, this just goes on the base. This just adds a little bit of murkiness and definition to it just to again bring it all together. And you can see with just a couple of little bits of dry brushing, actually the miniatures came together really quickly. And, you know, this is pretty much the finished product here. And you can see really nice, really good definition between the green and the brown. And with a little bit of practice, you can get the full warband done in roughly about 30 minutes, excluding the drying time. You know, essentially you're slapping the colours on as long as you're neat. Um, and your dry brushing is, is all in one go. You just run down the line. So I'm just showing the other miniatures from the warband here, just so you can see some examples of what I've done. Any other adornments that are dotted around, I've used the skeleton horde. I think it is bone colour. So for example, Yathari here, she's got a different kind of familiar next to her vines. And also you've got those little bits that are hanging from the headdress. They're the skeleton horde. But you can see the green that I've used is just breaking up those transitions between the brown of the wild wooden plague bearer flesh. It makes it look a little bit less extreme and a little bit more natural. So yeah, quick and easy tutorial for you guys and I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, please feel free to put it in the comments below. And we hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Hi guys, thank you very much for watching our content. It means the world to us. If you'd like to see some more videos, they should be over here. And if you'd like to support our channel, keep these lights on. You can find links to our Patreon and merchandise in the description below. See you later.